All right. Uh, good afternoon. It is just the afternoon. Uh, 1 p.m. in this room, there will be a briefing by Josep Borrell, the European Union's high representative for foreign affairs and security policy. He'll also, um, he also, I think, spoke in Security Council, was speaking this morning. Uh, at 5 p.m., there will be another press briefing here, this time by the French foreign minister, Catherine Colonna. Uh, turning to Ukraine, as you know, the General Assembly meeting is uh, still going on. Uh, Paulina is not briefing today, just for your information. Um, on the ground, our humanitarian colleagues are telling us they have facilitated 12 interagency convoys over the past two weeks to frontline communities in the east and south of the country. They've delivered food, water, shelter, winter materials, and other necessities for more than 150,000 people. This includes two convoys on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week uh, to Borova, Veliki, Berluk, in the eastern Kharkiv region, close to the uh, Russian-Ukrainian border. We, along with our partners, are also committed to staying, of course, and delivering as we approach the one-year mark since the, uh, the full-scale invasion of Ukraine by Russia. However, we continue to need safe and unimpeded access to all parts of Ukraine so that we can reach more people more frequently. Lack of access in areas not under the control of the government of Ukraine is limiting our ability to assist people and assess their needs. For its part, the UN Refugee Agency today noted that 12 months since the, since the start of this phase of the war, more than 13 million people remain uprooted from their homes, including 8 million refuge, Ukrainian refugees across Europe and more than 5 million displaced people within uh, Ukraine. The report shows that their prospects for return home in the near future are clouded by continued hostilities, insecurity, and destructions in their home region. For its part, the International Labor Organization also released a report today on Ukraine. ILO estimates that employment in October 2022 in the country was 15.5 percent below 2021 pre-war levels. Uh, that's a drop of 2.4 million jobs. But all of these reports are available online. And you saw that yesterday afternoon, the Secretary General delivered remarks at the opening of the special emergency session of the General Assembly and noting the one-year mark of Russia's invasion of Ukraine stands as a grim milestone for the people of Ukraine and for the international community. He will uh, speak in the Security Council tomorrow, and we'll share those remarks for you as soon as we can. Turning to our response to the um, earthquake in Turkey and Syria, 53 trucks crossed from southern Turkey into northwest Syria today, carrying food from the World Food, carrying aid from the World Food Program, the International Organization for Migration, the UN uh, Refugee Agency, WFP provided food commodities. IOM sent shelters, hygiene, and other items. UNHCR also provided supplies for more than 5,000 people. Of the 53 trucks that went through today, 47 went through Bab al Hawa, 6 through Bab al Salam. Uh, that brings us to a total of 335 trucks or lorries that have gone in since February 9th from Turkey into northwest Syria. As of today, the three months flash appeal for Syria for uh, nearly $400 million is 27% funded. Meanwhile, regarding Turkey, um, the UN's resident coordinator for uh, Turkey, Alvaro Rodriguez, traveled to areas impacted by the quake uh, to see the humanitarian response. He also met with authorities and first responders. In uh, Karaman Maras, Mr. Rodriguez visited a tent city where 5,000 men, women, and children have been taking refuge. He said he was struck by the scale of the devastation, but praised the response by the government, the international community, and Turkish citizens. In Torkuglu, he spoke to Syrian families displaced by the earthquake. Mr. Rodriguez also met with um, UN disaster assessment uh, teams. Um, those disaster uh, assessment and coordination teams remain active in southern Turkey to support the coordination of urban search and rescue operations and assist in the needs assessments. A liaison team in Ankara is also working with Turkish authorities who, as you know, are leading the response. We and our partners are continuing to provide assistance to the government's earthquake response efforts. Um, 
And as of today, the, our three months flash appeal for Turkey for over a billion dollars is just 4% funded. Tor Venislan, the special coordinator uh, for the Middle East peace process, uh, visited Gaza today, uh, one day after the violence that we saw in Nablus. Mr. Venislan is continuing his engagement with all concerned parties to try to de-escalate the situation. He continues to urge all sides to refrain from steps that could further inflame an already very volatile situation. And an update regarding our peacekeeping mission in Mali. As we mentioned Tuesday, three peacekeepers from the Senegalese contingent were tragically killed when their convoy hit an improvised explosive device in the center of the country. And we now have the names of uh, those three uh, peacekeepers. They were Quartermaster Eugène Mingu, um, 50 years old, Private Osiyunu Diallo, who was 29, and Private Pierre Bouban, who was 36. Uh, we, of course, send our deepest condolences to their families, friends, and all of the uh, members of the peacekeeping mission. The Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed arrived in Sweden today at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Stockholm. She discussed the critical role of Sweden in multilateralism, as well as uh, relations between UN and Sweden and the partnership between UN and Sweden across all pillars of the United Nations work. Um, those discussions took place with Johan Forsell, the Minister for International Development Cooperation and Foreign Trade, Diane Yance, the State Minister for International Development Cooperation and Foreign Trade, and other senior Swedish government officials. She also met with the Speaker of the Riksdag, uh, which is if my Swedish is correct, is the Assembly, uh, Andreas Norlin, and members of the Swedish Parliament for an exchange on the impact of our partnership on, um, on our partnership with the group. In Uppsala, she paid tribute to our former Secretary General, Dag Hammarskjöld, at his grave. The Deputy Secretary General delivered the annual Dag Hammarskjöld lecture uh, entitled Strength in Our Common Humanity at Uppsala University. In her remarks, she reflected on the wisdom and action that define the late Hammarskjöld's legacy and how we can use the lessons he taught us to act for sustainable, inclusive development today. Tropical storm uh, Freddy uh, is expected to make landfall in Mozambique tomorrow. We and our partners are supporting the government-led response by deploying staff to Inhambane and Gaza provinces, and our teams are on standby to carry needs assessments. In Madagascar, where the cyclone has already made landfall, and that was on Tuesday, we are carrying out assessments to evaluate the damage and determine what the most urgent humanitarian needs are. Today, uh, Ersin Tatar and Nikos Christodoulis uh, met for the first time under the auspices of the Deputy uh, Special Advisor of the Secretary General in Cyprus, Colin Stewart. They had an informal discussion, which was open and constructive. Our colleagues in Cyprus note that Mr. Christodoulis and Mr. Tatar addressed several issues, including the recent uh, earthquakes in Turkey and Syria and uh, that claimed thousands of lives, including amongst them some Turkish Cypriots, and they expressed their sympathy for the victims and their families. Turning to Bosnia and Herzegovina, in a statement issued today, the UN Special Advisor on the Prevention of Genocide, Alice uh, Warimu Indiritu, expressed her concern over continuous incidents of revisionism regarding atrocity crimes perpetrated during the 92-95 conflict, including denial of the Srebrenica genocide, in particular, she raised concern over recent incidents reported following a decision to amend the law on the center of, uh, for Srebrenica Potocari Memorial and Cemetery of the 95 Genocide. Ms. Andiritu um, also acknowledged the tireless efforts of survivors and other civil society actors in Bosnia-Herzegovina and are that are who are working every day to tackle the denial of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity, and to promote sustainable peace and reconciliation across the country. Her remarks are online. Um, report issued today by a number of UN agencies uh, shows that every two minutes a woman dies during pregnancy or childbirth. The report called Trends in Maternal Mortality reveals alarming setbacks for women's health over recent years as maternal deaths either increased or stagnated in nearly all regions of the world. According to the report, which tracked maternal health nationally, regionally, and globally from 2000 to 2020, 
There were an estimated 287,000 maternal deaths worldwide in 2020. This marks only a slight decrease uh, from 2016 when the UN Sustainable Development Goals came into effect. The total number, in total numbers, maternal health continues to be largely concentrated in the poorest parts of the world and in countries impacted by conflict. Um, and uh, for those of us who would enjoy a musical break, uh, the UN Alliance of Civilization and our colleagues at the Department of Global Communications invite you to a musical event in the Trusteeship Council that will get underway at 1.15 uh, to 2.30. The event, entitled Equal in Music, introduces the Western Eastern Divan Ensemble, which is part of the Western Eastern Divan Orchestra that was uh, founded in 1999. Uh, by uh, the Israeli conductor and pianist Daniel Barenboim and the Palestinian author and scholar Edward Said. Uh, the orchestra was designated by former Secretary General Ban Ki-moon as a UN global advocate for cultural understanding. They will be performing Felix Mendelssohn's String Octet in E-flat major, Opus 20. Um, senior personnel announcement. Today, uh, Secretary General appointed Isaac Kirabo Kassira of Rwanda as the head of the UN Support Office for Somalia. She succeeds Lisa Filippetto of Australia, to whom the Secretary General is deeply grateful for her important contribution and service in the Support Office in Somalia. Uh, Ms. Kassira brings to this position more than 30 years of experience at local, national, and international levels. Since 2020, she has served as the resident High Commissioner uh, to the government of Ghana and non-resident representative Benin, Togo, Sierra Leone, Cote d'Ivoire, and Liberia for Rwanda. Uh, lots more online. Finally, um, we are now up to 57 fully paid members, and we thank our friends in a country where the official language is Divehi. Bingo. That is impressive. That is, and you're, you're just you're just a cool cat today, Deshi. Uh, that is very very impressive. Um, we thank our friends in Mali, which is the capital of the Maldives. Uh, if you have a question, you can ask the first one for quite a while with that one. Thank you, Steph. Uh, actually, I do have one. Uh, yeah. I, I, we, I saw the, I saw the protest uh, next to the to the UN showing all those beautiful. Sea creature, ocean creatures, make me think. One one question, that uh, the Japanese news outlets today uh, recently reported that Japan is going to uh, try to have the G7 countries to endorse its release of the nuclear waste water into into the sea, uh, which has been, uh, you know. I mean, I mean, many neighboring countries, including South Korea, China, express its concern. So I just want to know, uh, what, what's the position from the UN on this issue? Uh, I, I, we're not in the habit of commenting on what people may do. But I can tell you uh, is that especially this week, um, when uh, member states are meeting to discuss uh, the future of the oceans, it is important that every uh, member state, uh, especially those who have a coastline along uh, along the oceans, do whatever they can to protect uh, our common natural resources and our common humanity through the oceans. Linda. Thank you, Steph. I believe you mentioned that the appeal for Turkey um, is only about four, is yep. it four percent, yep. like yep. four, one digit? Yes. Okay. Yep. I was just wondering uh, what you think that's attributable to, and also, do you think some of it it's so low because of unilateral um, contributions it, that countries are it, making? It's hard. I mean, it, it's hard for me to provide a uh, factual analysis. Uh, I mean, for sure, it was just launched, right? It was launched after the Syria uh, the Syria appeal. We, I, I can't get into the heads of donors, uh, but we just hope. <laughs> Uh, you've lost your first question <laughs> privileges now. Exactly. Uh, yeah. um, I can't get into the heads of donors. Uh, what we do hope is that people give generously to all our humanitarian appeals. Carrie. Hi, Steph. Um, I, you just mentioned that for this year, 57 uh, members already fully paid their dues. Um, 
concerning the previous years, how many members are behind and cannot currently vote at the GA, uh, especially there's a vote this afternoon? Okay, so on the under the Article 19, uh, under the Article 19 rule, there are five member states who are under the Article 19. <laughs> Those Comoros, Lebanon, Sao Tome, Principe, Somalia, and Venezuela. However, uh, three of those countries, thanks to a General Assembly resolution, were given the right to vote despite their arrears. So those are Comoros, Sao Tome, um, and Principe, and Somalia. Um, so the only two that are currently not permitted to vote are Venezuela and uh, Lebanon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, yes, go ahead, please. Hi, I'm James from Ashar. Thank you for the invitation to go to that Divan um, Ensemble today. We're actually covering that. And I was doing some background reading. The founder, Daniel Barenboim, was uh, declared a messenger of peace by Ban Ki-moon. Is he still a messenger of peace? What's that mean? Uh, it's, the, the orchestra itself was designated a, uh, what I, the terminology that I used um, is an ambassador of I'll read you exactly what I said. Uh, we can put you also in touch with our colleagues in the Department of Global uh, Communication who will be able to give you a bit more background on Mr. Barenborn's involvement uh, with the UN. The ensemble itself um, is a uh, UN global advocate for cultural uh, understanding. But I'll check on Daniel Barenborn individually, and I will let you know. Okay, is there, what's the significance of them playing today? Does that, because of the... Well, the, the, the event was, uh, had been programmed for, for quite some time. Uh, I mean, so there, there is a, uh, I think the, through its work, uh, the orchestra uh, symbolizes how culture and how music uh, can bring people who could be on opposite sides of, uh, of any argument or decision or violence, how they can bring them together uh, and try to work towards cultural understanding. Abdel Hamid. Oh, sorry, I, never, I didn't see, sorry, I didn't see your hand. Stefan, I have two questions. Uh, what is mine? Can I, uh, you're not, you're not coming in very loudly. If they can up the volume a little bit. Okay, I will do that. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> Okay, I have two questions. First, on August 19, 2018, the Secretary General submitted a report to the General Assembly about the protection of the Palestinians, and he gave four options, three of them under his jurisdiction. He doesn't need to go back to anyone. Uh, does the Secretary General still stand with these options? Can he uh, go one step further and implement one of the three options that under his power? That's uh, my first question. I, I need to look at that, exactly that report. If you can send me the reference, I'll take a look at the report. Um, and your second? And the second question, I mean, Thor Winsland and the statement, uh, presidential statement, called for the escalation. And today, 178 settlers stormed the Al-Aqsa Mosque. So if those settlers keep storming the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and no one tell them what you are doing is wrong, and no statement issued after they do the storming, they will come back tomorrow, and after tomorrow, uh, and the day after, and uh, they will continue doing that. I, I think with no. We, we, we have been very, very clear, we, we have been very clear at, uh, at, in stating our position that there should be no change in the status quo of the holy sites uh, in Jerusalem and that everyone needs to respect, uh, respect the status quo. Evelyn. Okay, thank you, Steph. Um, the first question I have is uh, the security turmoil in Mali that caused death of peacekeepers. And the usual in Central African Republic, uh, is the Wagner Group very much involved? Well, I, I would refer you to uh, reports that have been, uh, that have been 
uh, issued. Uh, on by that. who? Uh, there's a recent one by the UN Special Rapporteur on, uh, on Mali and the peacekeeping missions, uh, human rights reports as well. But you don't have that in... I mean, there are, it's all public documents. I don't, I, I mean, there are, yeah, they've, been re they've been released, uh, the, the human rights, the special rapporteur, I think, released a report uh, two days ago, uh, and the mission's been releasing our, our human rights. I would refer you to the human rights report that was refer released to not very long ago. Those are public documents. And secondly, uh, I haven't read the report, but the one on maternal deaths, hopefully it uh, delves into countries rather than large regions. Yeah, I mean, it, it shows that, uh, as, as always, the, the countries where there is the greatest suffering are underdeveloped countries, uh, so, sorry, developing countries and countries in, in conflict. But I would encourage you to read the report. Okay. Thank you all. Have a great day.